Hi there. Welcome back to the Prolific Author Podcast. I have a really fun interview for you today. Uh, Brian Cohen agreed to come on the show and talk a little bit about Amazon ads. Now, if you don't know who Brian Cohen is, you really do need to get to know him in the indie space, okay? He does a lot of great things for authors. He is kind of most famous for running Amazon Ad School, which teaches authors how to do Amazon ads. He's very good at what he does. He taught me. I learned from his ad school. Um, he also has a few other things like Best Page Forward that uh, helps authors with their book descriptions. And he's got a new book out, okay? But he is really kind of the... Um, expert, if you will, on Amazon ads, and he just really knows the platform really well and can give you a good idea about what to expect. So um, I really would recommend that you listen closely to this interview. And then he has a free challenge coming up um, in the next couple of weeks uh, of October 2022. And if you've never done Amazon ads before, I really highly recommend you do one of those challenges. They're totally free. And he shows you how to set up ads and gives you, you know, just an idea of what it's like to run Amazon ads and kind of get you familiar with the whole interface and everything. And as we talk about in the interview, he has a lot of people who end up setting up profitable ads in that free challenge. So by the end of the week, they're already doing well. Okay, so it's something that I would really highly recommend if you have even a single book to sell. Um, but we'll get more into that in the interview. Let's, uh, let's hop right in. All right, welcome back to the Prolific Author Podcast. We are here today with Brian Cohen, who is the person who runs Author Ad School and is pretty well known in our little indie space. So how are you doing today, Brian? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. So for anybody who doesn't know who you are, and I can't imagine there are many, um, but just why don't you start by introducing yourself and telling us how you, you know, kind of the evolution, the journey, how you came to do what you do. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I've been self-publishing since 2010. I was kind of lucky to get in not too long after Amazon opened up uh, KDP. And I really fell in love with, with the publishing aspect, but also helping other authors who were interested in this sort of thing. And so I had a blog for some time, kind of moved into a podcast, the Sell More Book Show, which has now been going on for 430 consecutive <laughs> weeks or so, which is which is fun. And yeah. one of the things I love about it is every week we're studying what's happening. And mm -hmm. so it's really nice. Like I, I thought about writing a history of modern self-publishing book because I I just feel like I've gotten to see the industry change and grow over that time. And I've, I've learned a lot about it. And uh, the podcast led to me trying to figure out, well, how can I help authors sell more books? And one of the ways was uh, my company, Best Page Forward, which writes the book descriptions that go on the back of the books and on Amazon. And when some of our clients were struggling with how do I make sure that the new book description is doing things? It kind of led to, oh, well, let's find a system to better track this and uh, how to get regular traffic, which led to figuring out Amazon ads, which, which eventually led to the five-day author ad profit challenge and author ad school, which was about, well, how can we get more clicks and figure out how to get those books with the new blurbs profitable. And now we've had over 30,000 authors go through those challenges. And, and that's been really wow. great. We're coming up on the three-year anniversary of the first one we ever did and trying to run those each quarter. And, and those are great. And all sorts of other fun stuff <laughs> that, that really come back to this idea that I know there's a lot of things that authors have to deal with, especially when they are attempting to be prolific. And I think that it's okay to struggle. It's it's just one of those things of reaching out to, to people who will help and, and trying to make sure you're connected up with people who really want to help make that uh, dream of full-time authordom a reality. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. I mean, but you, there's so much to unpack in what you said. Um, 
I, I love, I actually love the idea of a, a, a history of modern self-publishing. Um, right. I remember several years ago, I went to a conference and I spoke to this older gentleman who did a presentation on the history of publishing in general. Like he started in like, you know, whenever the first printing press was <laughs> invented, right, whenever right. that was. And uh, he kind of went through it and I asked him if he'd ever written a book on it because I thought it was fascinating. And he's like, well, no, I, maybe I will. I don't think I have an audience for that. But um, mm. anyway, I don't know. Maybe on the one hand, I kind of think maybe only self-publishing author types would be interested in reading it. But at the same time, it might read like the evolution of any business or any market. You know what I mean? So right. it could end up being a business history sort of thing that's really, really fascinating. Um, yeah. You, I actually talk a lot um, a lot of the authors who started really early on, like 2010, not all of them, of course, but a lot of them aren't in the business anymore because right. a lot of them jumped on when it was super easy to get thousands of downloads and that's not the case anymore, but you've stuck it out. You've, you've really been there through the whole thing. So can you talk to us a little bit about the evolution and what it takes to kind of roll with the changes all the time? Absolutely. And, and I think a lot of those people, uh, who, who left, I, they might have not been as engaged in mm -hmm. wanting to help authors. They might have been engaged in wanting to help people, but when it got harder, they moved on to maybe something else that would allow them to help people differently. Right. Assuming, you know, many of them are good actors and want to <laughs> <laughs> actually do good things. But yeah. I think a lot of the evolution has been in the beginning, you could put a book on Amazon or on Nook or, or wherever. And it might somewhat sell of its own accord if it has a decent enough cover, decent enough book description, and the book is good. But those times went away more and more, I would say, with the advent of uh, Amazon ads, which came about in about 2016. I would say that it started to get harder because the also bots, uh, the carousel that shows up under each book of books that are uh, purchased in kind with this book they have started to go away more and more and been replaced more with the ads. And that's just kind of how it goes. Um, right. but, but also the quality, the, the creative that goes along with these products, the, the, the titles, the covers, the reviews, they all kind of need to be better than they were a few years back. And I think that if you are starting now, it doesn't mean that, oh, I missed the boat. It just means, well, the boats are now a lot nicer and the boats are now <laughs> more professional because the seas have become more choppy and, and you need something that can handle it, which might cost a little more, which might take a little more time. But if you care about the books, if you care about uh, connecting with the readers, then these are just the things you're going to have to deal with. Right. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about uh, author at school. Um, what kinds of things do you teach? Like what would somebody expect if they were to join author at school? Sure. Well, first of all, we always recommend people take the, take the free challenge first, which uh, is just kind of a free preview. Of, mm -hmm. of some of the material in author ad school. We open it every quarter. And so that first and foremost, but some of the things we teach in both the challenge and author ad school, it used to just be mostly focused on Amazon ads. It was even called Amazon ad school at one point, but we changed it up in part because Amazon said, eh, Brian, maybe you should change it. Uh, but <laughs> secondly, because it's so much, there's so many non-ad related things to get successful, profitable ads. It comes down to making sure that the genre you're writing to in the beginning actually exists. Mm -hmm. It's making sure that you have professional looking sales page to go along with everything. It's, it's about things that complement ads, like running quarterly 99 cent or free discounts, which can help to, for a book that sagged in its rankings, it can help to kind of bump it up. And so there's a lot of things that are fundamentals of self-publishing, but in kind of the context of 
well, how can we make your books more profitable? Like one of the things I'm always saying is, well, what can we do to put more profit in your pocket? Because this can get expensive, especially if people are kind of coming in and not knowing anything about the industry to begin with. And so a lot of that is in author ad school, which is supported by, we we actually have students who've gone through the course who later then joined my team actually answering questions throughout the week. We, we have support shifts and we have live Zooms throughout the week because I think that too many people who run courses are, are so busy that it, mm -hmm. it's not like they necessarily have time to have this whole support network built up. But I think that, and, and so many of those courses are really, really good. But I think that a lot of authors are struggling with so many parts along the way that you need not to just get one question answered every month. You get bunches and bunches of questions all along the way. And and I don't mind setting up something that's a little more handholdy because it's tough. It's it's tough mm -hmm. stuff. And and so th those are kind of the things that we have in that program. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean, as someone who's who's in ad school, I can tell you that when I started out, sometimes it's just the little tiny things that make a difference. You know, I was misunderstanding how to do one small part of the ad. And then when I put my question into the community, it got answered in it. You know what I mean? It was just like a tiny little thing. It wasn't like I was doing it completely wrong, but it was making a difference in, in right. whether my ads were working or not. So yeah, so that's, that's super cool. So do you find, you know, again, assuming that the book is well-written and that, you know, it's got a decent cover and a decent uh, sales page and assuming that everyone's got their ducks in a row, do you find that for most authors, the ads make a big difference in uh, how much revenue they pull in from their books? I think they absolutely can. I think it, it's, it's, it's challenging because even now, decent cover, decent title, you know, like let's say excellent cover for the genre, excellent title, excellent uh, things like their back matter linking to book two very effectively. In that case, once all the ducks are, are very much wearing their finest, uh, I think that the ads can make a big difference. I think it, it really can depend on what the author has set up already. If they have just one book and it's, and it's in a very popular genre, it can make a difference. If they have one book that was kind of the book of their heart that maybe is a cross-genre matchup, a mashup that has a bunch of different things that aren't usually put together, you might not see as much of a difference. But I think it, that can be used as a proof too. I mm -hmm. think seeing, okay, I ran an ad, like this is my quibble with, you should only run ads when you have three to five books out. Because here's my quibble. If you are have written a book, put your heart and soul into it, and you run ads to it, and you get a hundred clicks and you see that nobody's buying it, you fix up the sales page, try that, you get a hundred clicks, still see that nobody's buying it. Does it really make sense to write books two, books three, books four mm -hmm. in that series if you're having trouble selling book one? And so I think ads can really be used as a testing tool to see, because sometimes you do have all your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it, it doesn't, you know, strike the community, the reading community as well as you'd like. So I think ads can be a really good litmus test to see what should I actually write next? Is it book two or do I need to focus more on, on making sure I'm connecting with my readers? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I like that. Um, and have you had a lot of authors who have reported using it that way? We're trying. It, it's, it's really like when authors have told us, we listened, we, we saw that these other books were not doing it. So we pivoted. And then we ran ads. You hear about all sorts of like breakaway stories where they're really seeing a lot of success. Of course, when authors have come to us with the ducks in a row already and they run ads, it it makes a huge difference. And like, I, I love seeing, I think we've now had 11, 11 authors hit that 
five figure a month uh, royalty amount. And seeing those, it's just like, it's such a good feeling to see when Mm -hmm. it does click. But I always worry about the people because I want to help everybody. Uh, I always worry about the people that it doesn't click with and then they give up when they have this test that they can use. They just don't use it. So I I think some people have, some people who haven't, it's just like, all right, well, let's try to explain this in a different way. Let's try to see if, if, if going about it a different way can help. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely fair to say that you need to be willing to uh, pivot and change things in order to to try and hit your success. I think so. I um there's a great book I read recently called Everything You Want by Derek Sivers. He's the guy who founded CD Baby. And mm. he he has a chapter. There are all these really short chapters he says, uh, if it's not a hit, pivot. He used to think that uh he could market his way to anything being a success. But he kept getting doors slammed in his face, things not working. But when he actually had something that was a hit, it was easy to sell. And so Mm -hmm. I think that if you never are willing to pivot, you're not going to feel that sensation of something being a hit. Because if it's not immediately, like the authors I know who have big successes, even when they put up a pre-order for their first book in their series they saw pre-orders on it Mm. no ads no nothing the 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 genre was right and they got all the the marketing aspects of it even without people having read this author before were buying this book because it was already primed to be a hit and that's something that is tough for people to hear but I will not shy away from the tough love that people need to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. And I think, I mean, I, I think like you said, that goes back to getting everything done even before the writing is is there to make sure you hit your tropes and your genre and your cover and, and all of that. And that's when you see more organic reach. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk just about something slightly different. I mean, not sales in particular, but visibility because I know that I had early on before I, before I joined ad school I was using a book um, that I had gotten off Amazon about Amazon ads and it's pretty outdated now since they mm. changed up the lock screen ads and everything but it was it was about using really really low bids to try and sell books and I mean we're talking two three cents really low and of course I couldn't really make good money doing that on the ads um, you, it was almost impossible to scale if you're staying that low, but right. I did notice that when I turned them off, my sales tanked. So even mm-hmm. if I was only getting a few sales, you know, if I was making a hundred dollars a month or something, when the ads were off, that completely went away. So, I mean, talk about, can you talk to us about how ads give you more visibility as an author? author? Right. Well, it's always interesting because there really are two camps in the author world and for some reason one camp is a lot grumpier than the other, but uh, we can we can get into that later. Um, there's the camp that the ads and the stats that they report are 100% accurate. You should follow these without ever questioning them. And then there is the camp, which is my camp, which is I anecdotally, it really does seem like some sales don't get reported as being attributed to the ads that came from the ads. And, mm-hmm. and, and I don't think either system is perfect. I will say right. that right now. I don't think my system is perfect. We're saying, hey, some amount of sales might have actually come from the ads. So you should kind of consider all sales coming from the ads just to cover your bases. That's mm-hmm. not perfect. Neither is the all... Amazon's so amazing. All their stats must be perfect. That neither camp is is perfect. Really, if we could find somewhere in the middle, it's probably going to be the best. But I have heard plenty of stories like yours where there is a goose egg coming up on actual sales or KENP, the Kindle pages coming from this ad, turn it off. And despite the fact that it said there were no sales coming, the sales actually go down over on KDP. 
And so right. I've heard it so many times. And so what I would say is we can't necessarily think of a, of a click as uh, being super relevant or not super relevant. Like we try our best to target the right things. But if your book is profitable, if you run ads to it and it's profitable, let's say you put out 20 bucks and you get $40 in return. And obviously we'd all love to be working with higher numbers, but let's start with those. <laughs> if you can consistently send traffic to that book, you're spending a dollar to make $2. If you are focused more on getting more clicks, always getting more clicks. I want to get more clicks rather than this ad looks like it's not doing so well. Let's pause this. This ad looks like it's not doing so well. Let's pause this. If we go instead with every click is making me money, then our goal is, well, let's not, you know, try to restrict these. Let's expand. Let's have more ads, more targets. Let's double down on the ones that are working well, maybe trying to scale those up and, and trying to create more ads based on it. Because I have certain books that every time I spend $100, I make $200. Every time I spend $200, I make $400. That's not all my books. That's some of my books. So <clears throat> why would I try to spend less? I want to spend right. more because it's going to make me more. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone then who maybe has a book that is not making money, like you said, that is, uh, you know, they're getting clicks, but not sales. So they're spending that money they're not seeing. What, what advice would you give them? Well, we want to get, we want to get the data that will help us mm -hmm. kind of going back to the beginning of talking about if it's not a hit, do we need to pivot? Well, Let's say you've gotten a hundred clicks to the book that is not profitable. You've spent a hundred, but you only made 80. At that point, you would look at, well, how many sales did I have? Let's say it was eight sales. And so you had a hundred clicks, eight sales. And for the purposes of this, I count reading it cover to cover on Kindle Unlimited counts as one sale in my book. So let's say it's eight total sales with that in mind. That leads to about a one, you get one sale for every 12 and a half clicks. And so we would look at that and say, well, usually you want to be closer to six to eight. So our question here is, do you want to write something different or do you want to try to fix this sales page? Like maybe get a new cover, maybe do a relaunch perhaps with the new title. I've done it and, and found some success from it. And you get to make that decision. But if you then run the ads, you fix everything up to the best of your ability, run the ads again, and you still end up with 12 or it gets worse, or you maybe get it down to nine, but it's still not profitable. There's not necessarily much more improvement that you can do. So mm -hmm. it, it, it comes into this really hard situation where you've spent time on a book and it might not be there. But honestly, I think that every book you write may just count as training to get you better yeah. for the next book that has a better chance of selling. Not every author hits it right out of the, you know, out of the park on number one or number two, or even in their first five, but the ads can help you to, instead of, I wrote book two, three, four, five, six already, but book one isn't selling. It, it right. may help you before you go down that path. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. And I mean, um, I, there, I know that there's a lot of authors who don't necessarily want to do ads, who don't, you know, the idea of testing them, of, of all this, you know, kind of left brain things you have to do because most of us are right brain creatives. But what, I mean, what would you say to them, to people who, you know, aren't interested in doing the ads? What, did, what would you tell them? Well, I don't, I think there's a lot of people who aren't interested in doing the ads. I think <laughs> there's a lot of people who aren't interested in the marketing and some of them outsource it. Some of them get people to do it for them. Some people use services. So, so there's options there, but 
they can be costly. So you do have to be careful there. But right. I think ads can be created. Mm-hmm. I think that the research can inspire ideas when you're looking up keywords and title book titles that you could use as part of your ads. I think that it can inspire creativity. I think writing the ads can be a very creative pursuit, uh, depending on how you do it. And I think some people, when they write ads, they can get inspired to create new marketing for the book that that can mm-hmm. lead to things. Like, I don't know where people got the idea that marketing is not creative because marketing is so, so creative and it can be an expression of your art. I mean, look at like Stranger Things, for Mm -hmm. instance. So Stranger Things, their marketing for that show is very in line with uh, the vision of the, the creative vision of the show. You've got this, like, I think back to the promos for this season and the, uh, I won't spoil anything, but in the promo for the season, I will just say for people who have not seen it, uh, you won't understand this, but in the promo released a year in advance, there are four dings of a clock, which is a major, major plot point in season in season four and for a year in advance for there to be this plot point clue in the marketing materials just shows that wow like you can infuse your creativity into the marketing and it can play a role in whether or not people enjoy what you're putting out And then when you do that sort of thing, you have nerds like me saying like, oh my gosh, like, I think I remember this from the trailer and going back to it and saying like, whoa. And I think that you like, you want to follow the path of the people who've done good things before. Like you you may say, oh, well, I'll do this car wash for my book in my driveway (laughs) and people will come. Like, obviously that's not going to work. But if you can have a creative spin on something that our people are already doing, like ad copy or like your book cover, and you have some little aspect of the creativity baked into it while still fulfilling whatever expectations readers have, that can be an awesome creative expression. And so creative brain people, you can use your creative brain to market your book. You just have to get creative about it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I love that. I've actually never heard anyone put it that way before, but I really, really love that idea. And I will say that I have actually experienced getting some inspiration from getting keywords and things. You know, you go through your genre and you start looking at what other people have written that you maybe just haven't come across before. And you're like, huh, you know, and it starts to be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really, really like that. Um, So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, Now, the other thing I wanted to address was that Amazon is always changing and always coming up with new things. So I know that there's been some frustration among authors in the past when we didn't have all the information we would like for ads, but are you finding that they're giving us more and more over the years? Look, Amazon's definitely sharing more types of stats. Mm -hmm. Um, Personally, things like percentage of impressions that are in the top, you know, the the top uh, of search, Mm-hmm. I don't pay a lot of attention to those. And, and maybe that is something that, uh, that, that I should look more into. But what we have found is it still comes back to the fundamentals. Did you make more money than you spent? Right. Because you could have all the stats in the world and still it would come down to you're not going to get a trophy for best advertising cost of sale or best uh, percentage impressions of, at the top of search, you're not going to win anything for those. You are going to, however, make money if you spend less than you uh, than you earn. And right. if you get sales uh, every few clicks and you can reliably say, 
I'm going to send more traffic to this book and it's going to keep making me money, then <clears throat> yes, you can look at trying to optimize other stats, especially when it comes down to scaling your ads. But in the beginning, I, I wouldn't touch those stats with a 10-foot pole. Mm. I would say, let's focus on big picture. Did you profit? Second biggest picture, how many clicks did it take for someone to buy? Right, right. Do you think, and I know this is total conjecture, like nobody can tell what they're going to give us in the future, but do you think it'll ever get to a point where they will have really reliable stats where we can just see for sure how many sales are coming from, you know, each ad and things like that. Do you think they'll ever get to that point? I still don't know if Amazon even tracks KU pages, right? Like really? I still <laughs> remember from a few years back when it was like they added the page flip feature and then it seemed mm -hmm. people were testing. Oh, well, uh, it doesn't look like this is tracking. Like, I don't know if, if yeah. even that is still functioning. And this is as a person who uh, works with Amazon and likes Amazon, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe the stats will get more reliable, but I I still think that we we aren't going to see a lot from one or two percent improvements in the in the ad dashboard stats. What we right. can look at is big picture. Should I write this next book? Well, let's see what the stats say. Should I uh, run more ads to this book? Let's see what the stats say. I think that if the stats, if the stats were very provable to be 100% accurate in all cases, I would still find the attribute all sales to your ads method really helpful for people starting out because I think that it's so easy to see a goose egg in sales and turn something off when maybe it's just about to get get really going and actually help right. your book. So I'm 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 pretty strongly in this camp even if even if it was so so provable that the stats were always 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 accurate. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And I, yeah, I do agree. I think it's just it's a matter of being safe and not overestimating in the wrong direction or anything, you know. Right. Right. Um, um so I'll just say one of the reasons we say get like three months worth of stats is because if you had something that was falsely attributed to your ad, usually it would even out within that three month period. Right. Right. Yeah. That's good to know. Good advice. So um, if you, you know, what advice would you give to someone who is an author that's kind of up and coming and wants to make money on their books and is a little bit on the fence about, about learning ads? What, what's the best advice you could give them? Well, I think that you deserve to know how your book is doing in the moment. It's it's one of the reasons we do do the free challenge um, because it's so hard to just read a book on something or to uh, or to uh, uh, jump in on your own and know like implicitly what all this stuff means. And so it's I think it's a good idea for everybody to run a few ads just to kind of see if they can get a temperature check for their book. Because I've done it. I wrote a seven book series that I probably could have stopped after book five because it wasn't really ever going to sell. But I kept going and kept going that wanting that sense of completion. And I kind of wish I had pivoted. And one of the reasons I teach about the pivoting is because I am like, you know, the ghost of Christmas past. I don't want you to repeat <laughs> the, the same mistakes I have. And, and so I think that if you want to know what you should do next, know where you're at right now. And I think this is one of the best ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot of, um, I don't know, power for lack of a better word that comes from understanding the ad platform and just it gives you a better understanding of how Amazon works and how different retailers work and how the whole space functions. I mean, have you found that? Oh yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you learn a lot, especially like you said, you found some inspiration from looking key up keywords, looking at these book titles, 
it, you want to know your industry, you want to know your mm -hmm. genre, and this is a good way to, to start that learning process. Yeah. And on the flip side, when you have someone who kind of, it does click for them, you've had a lot of students who have actually found profitability in the free challenge, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely great to see someone just within a week's time, seeing something it move in a positive direction, because that could just be all you needed, that little kick. And then it's like, oh, well, just keep doing what you're doing and good mm -hmm. things are going to happen. And so uh, right. I, why not? Why not give it a try just in case? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us and talking to us about ads. When is the next uh, free challenge that you're running? Next free challenge will start October 12th, uh, okay. 2022. So look out for that. That'll be at authorsadvertise.com. And uh, I have a book out about ads now. Oh, good. Exciting. What's it called? So it's self-publishing with Amazon ads. It is part reference book, uh, going through some of the same processes in the challenge, but it's also part story where I walk a somewhat amalgamated of different people together character uh, through a, a year of coaching with me to help them learn ads. And it, the, the attempt there is to cover the basics, but also to deal with the psychological aspects of running ads, because it can be really stressful. It can be surprising at times. And so that book is now available on the Amazon and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. It, it had been a little while since I'd put a book out. So I was excited to yeah. read it. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, no, I will make sure and link to that and I'll get this episode out before the next challenge so that people can uh, sign up for it. But I, I mean, we didn't really cover that, but I, I was thinking about that earlier that it, we should probably emphasize it's not a matter of throwing up some ads and seeing a bunch of money the next month. I mean, this can be a year long process to really learn it and dial it in. It's not something that's super quick. Absolutely. Yes. That is, that is why the book is written in that way, because <laughs> uh, it can take time, but I think that time usually ends up being well spent. Yeah, I agree. Because once you, once you learn at least the process, like you said, it's going to be different for every book and every series and everything. But once you learn the process, you can go through the process for anything you ever write and figure things out. Exactly. hundred percent. Good. All right. Well, thank you again so much for being here and for talking to my audience about this. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> sure thing. And good luck with that next uh, challenge. Thank you.